Okay, let's look at an acid-base calculation. This one's from November 2017. Remember to do acid-base calculations. We need the acid, um, acid pH formula, the ionization constant of water, and all of these general chemistry calculation formulas because you never know what's going to happen here. And this is here, so I don't have to type it in later. So, ammonia ionizes in water to perform a basic solution according to the following balanced equation. Ammonia gas plus water goes to the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. Is ammonia a weak or a strong base? Give a reason for your answer. So, ammonia is a weak base because it does not completely dissociate, ionize, ionize, it's a covalent compound, does not completely ionize in water. So you can say it incompletely ionizes, it does not completely ionize anything, so long as you say it's not completely ionizing. Write down the conjugate base of ammonia, so to get a conjugate base, okay, here, here is the conjugate get base, the ammonium ion, because, um, ugh, what am I saying? Write down the conjugate acid of ammonia. Sorry, no wonder I was confused. The conjugate acid of ammonia, if you want to find the conjugate acid, you must add a proton. So ammonia plus a proton gives you the ammonium ion. Okay, so this, the ammonium ion. Okay, I'm not sure if it wants the formula or the proper name, but we can write both because we are clever and we know them both. Identify one substance that can, in this reaction, that can be behave as an amphilite in some reactions. Water, water is usually a fairly good um, answer, safe answer in most of these, unless you are dealing with a polyprotic acid. Now, let's have a look. A learner adds distilled water to a soil sample. Let's move this up. Yeah, we should be fine here. A learner adds distilled water to a soil sample and then filters the mixture. The pH of the filtered liquid is then measured. He gradually adds an ammonia solution to this liquid and measures the pH of the solution at regular intervals. The graph below shows the results obtained. See here, look, we started at a pH of 4, which is acidic, and we ended at a pH of 10, which is basic. So there's been a neutralization reaction. Is the soil sample acidic or basic? The soil sample is acidic. It has a pH of 4, which is less than pH of 7, making it acidic. So basically anything that's got a pH less than 7 is acidic, which you should know. Calculate the concentration of the hydroxide ions in the reaction mixture after the addition of 4 cubic centimeters of ammonia. So let's have a look on the graph here. After we added 4 cubic centimeters of ammonia, our pH was 6. Okay, so the pH is 6 after 4 cubic centimeters of ammonia. These capitals and things. Okay, so the pH is 6. So now we're going to use this formula here, okay, because we're actually going to end up using, we're going to end up using, um, what's going on? Okay, we're going to end up using this formula and the other formula because we've got a pH here, and the moment we've got a pH, we've got a concentration of protons but it actually asks you to calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions so we're going to use this formula but we're also going to end up using this formula because this is the formula that um, links the hydronium ion concentration to the hydroxide ion concentration why is this putting me on another page when I do this it's very irritating try it like that. Okay, so uh, distracting formatting issues aside, let's have a look at what's going on here. So we worked out that when we added four cubic centimeters of ammonia, the pH was six, so we're going to come back to this formula 
and we're going to say 6 equals this minus log the hydronium ion concentration. Okay, one mark for the formula, one mark for substituting. So then you will find that the hydronium ion concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Okay, so we found the hydronium ion concentration, but it asked us for the hydroxide ion concentration, not the hydronium ion concentration. So we're going to use this formula here, Kw equals the proton concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration equals 1 times 10 to the 4. So we write out the formula and then we start substituting Kw equals this value, okay, because we've just calculated this based on the pH. Okay, multiplied by the hydroxide ion concentration and this is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So the power by the power of algebra, okay, what will my hydroxide ion concentration be? My hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 8, okay, 10 to the power of negative 8. And then we may not forget our units. 1 times 10 to the power of 8 moles per cubic decimeter. Okay, so that was quite easy. So long as we remember that we get pOH from the ionization constant of water. So we've got our hydroxide ion concentration here. Now, a laboratory technician wants to determine the concentration of a hydrochloric acid sample. He adds 5 cubic centimeters of the hydrochloric sample to 495 cubic centimeters of distilled water to give 500 cubic centimeters of dilute hydrochloric acid. Then he takes during a reaction 50 cubic centimeters of this dilute hydrochloric acid solution reacts completely with 0.29 grams of sodium carbonate. The balanced equation for this is wada wada. Calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid sample. So look here, we've got two steps. Step one, step two and they want you to be back over here. So we have to reverse this step and reverse that step. So the amount of acid here that neutralized this amount of sodium carbonate is only a small amount of the total moles of acid in here. Okay, so the moles of acid that neutralize this sodium carbonate is only 50 out of 500 cubic centimeters from here. And so it's only 50 out of 500 of the initial sample. So once we've gone through the first part, we have to think again how we get to our original concentration. So the first thing we're going to do is find the moles of what we can find. And what do we know? What are we given? We are given 0 0.29 grams of sodium carbonate. So this is a mass. I can find the relative molecular mass using my periodic table of sodium carbonate. Okay, also a nuisance to type in. So this is going to be 23 plus 23 plus 12 plus 16 times 3. And with your trusty calculator, you should get 106. Okay. So we found the relative molecular mass. Now we need to use a nice chemistry formula. So N equals M over M. So the N of the sodium carbonate, sodium carbonate is M over M. So how many moles of sodium carbonate have we got here? Uh, and my mass is 0 0.29 over, over, ish, what's going on here? Type, type, divided by 106. So this is going to be equal to calculators, calculators, 0.29 divided by 106. I've got 2,7 three six 
times 10 to the negative 3. Now remember, okay, that we're going to carry on with this calculation. So do not round this off and then keep going. You must keep this number in your calculator and work from there. Do not round off yet. Okay. So we found the number of moles of sodium carbonate in here. And they reacted with 50 cubic centimeters of acid according to this balanced rea reaction. So now we're going to use the mole ratio. Because otherwise how else can we relate it back to... Um, what the dickens... How else can we re relate it back to um, what we added? So we use the balanced equation. So it's one mole of this to two moles of that. Okay. So if there's one of these. Okay. One of these to two of those. This is going to be two times that, whatever that is because it's a long thing to write in. So let's work out what this is on the calculator. Uh, 5,47 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so now we've worked out that this is the number of moles of acid that we added, okay, in 50 cubic centimeters. So there's a choice of ways you can do this. If there's this many moles in 50 cubic centimeters, how many are going to be in the whole sample? So this is 500 cubic centimeters. That's 50 cubic centimeters. You just multiply this by 10. Okay. Or we can do more protracted calculations. Okay. We can find the concentration of this solution because we know C equals N over over V okay so this is now the concentration of the dilute HCl okay and so this will be N over V so this will be this number of moles over My volume, this was 50 cubic centimeters. Am I right? We put 50 cubic centimeters in there. So the concentration of this dilute hydrochloric acid is going to be this divided by 0.05 gives me 0 0,109. Okay, this is what my concentration is in moles per cubic decimeter. But now, because this is a di dilution problem, I can use that formula C1 V1 equals C2 V2. Yes? So we're looking for C1. So C1 times my volume 1. What was my volume 1? 5 cubic centimeters. What's going on to my times? 5 cubic centimeters. 5 cubic centimeters is 0, 0,005 is going to be equal to 0, 0,109, which is my concentration, which I've just calculated, times that volume, which was 500, which is 0, 0,5. So by the power of algebra, my concentration 1, which is the concentrated acid, is going to be, going to be calculator... 10,94, no unit, no mark, where's my unit, it was probably easier to type the unit in, there is my concentration of my um, concentrated acid at the very beginning, 10,94 moles per cubic decimeter. You have to be very careful here when you do these questions that you go the two steps backwards, okay? If you don't go the two steps backwards, it gets very, very confusing. You have to keep track of the volume to here and the volume back to there. Okay, question over.